Good morning, everybody. It's Shelly. I'm I'm sitting here with a whole bunch of uh, thumbnails, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So um, grab a cup of coffee. We're going to get to work. Um, if you're new here, I am Shelly Pryor. I'm a watercolor artist in Ontario, Canada, and mostly every morning or every Wednesday morning, I should say, uh, at 10 o'clock Eastern time, I do a live demonstration like we're going to do today. So um, let me tell you, first of all, um, when I first heard about doing thumbnails, um, you know, I saw them demonstrated and I thought, well, okay, and I tried it. And I basically tried to do what most people do, which is to create like a little mini masterpiece. <laughs> and that really wasn't working so well for me. And I thought, man, I'm using up all my time when I could be actually doing my painting. And why am I doing it small? But here's the thing. A, a thumbnail isn't necessarily a mini version of your finished painting so much as it's a, uh, a working exercise so think of it like a like an athlete an athlete would warm up um, a musician would do some scales or some exercises think of this as an exercise and it really doesn't have to take a lot of time the more of it you do the better you get at it and you'll start to understand uh, the value in it a little bit better as you go along because um, you will learn how to break down your bigger painting into more efficient steps. Uh, it's like a little practice run, but uh, without all the detail. <laughs> so uh, let, let me just switch my view here. All right, so we're gonna go to my table and um, you'll see a whole variety here of little thumbnails that I've done from various uh, reference images and things like that. Uh, some of them you'll see are just simply black and white, right? Um, others I have advanced into some color because then you start thinking in terms of um, color once you've worked it out in black and white. Um, before I get too far though, I want to say good morning to everybody. Um, <laughs> you're Sprite Zero in you, okay. Hi, West Virginia. Um, Wrens, oh, okay, uh, uh, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, wonderful. Thank you so much for joining. Um, yeah, feel feel free to ask your questions as we go along. I um, I'm, will be kind of watching the chat as we go along. So all you need for this is a little round brush. Well, this one's maybe, what size is this? This is a number eight round. We're going to be working small, so you know what? You can just use little scraps of your watercolor paper, or you can use, um, uh, you know, the backs of a failed watercolor or something like that. You know, we all have those. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to use some scraps here, and I'm not going to be painting these any larger than, say, a business card, right? So the idea isn't necessarily to, to work large or to work detailed, but it is to... Um, sort out the steps that you're going to be using and kind of give it a dry run. Have you ever gotten into the situation where you're um, you're starting to paint something and you don't know where to start? Heck, you don't even know if it's a good photo from to paint from. So this is a great way to sort out those problems. Um, so I've got a whole bunch of reference pictures here and you know, I could go through all of these. These are mostly florals, it looks like. Um, yeah, these all pretty much look like florals that I've grabbed here. Well, there's one scene, winter scene, a couple of winter scenes in here. All right, so, so we'll take um, maybe a floral and a winter scene. Uh, let me grab something here that might work, that won't take too long. Uh, you know, maybe something like that. I haven't done that one before. And uh, let's find one here. I can work out one of these. Okay, so here I'm going to take this little winter scene as well. Um, you know, obviously I didn't like schedule this and really plan it out to any, you know, extent. You know, much like you would do if you were just sitting down to paint yourself. 
Um, so I'm going to clear this out of the way here for a second. And before I actually get to sketching this or talking about, um, you know, how to break it down or anything else, I want to talk about um, values because values are are so crucial to a strong composition. They're crucial to um, um, helping you to understand, you know, how thick or thin to make a paint um, and so on. So if we talk about a value scale, I'll gra grab this. I've got my photos ready. I've got my um, little piece of paper here. And if we are working out how thin or how thick to make a paint, obviously if we add a lot of water to it, it's going to be very light. So a value scale is generally comprised of nine boxes. Okay, so we have nine different values. And so I'll just do this strip here. And you're all familiar with it. And you can buy them. You can buy them, but I would say that if you make your own, it's probably even better because making your own teaches you how to um, control the water in your watercolor. So making your own is good, and it's a good idea to make it for each of the colors that you use as well. So, um, so these are all boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I've worked out pretty close there. Okay, so we've got nine boxes. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this. Now, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so nine being the darkest means that you're going to have the most amount of uh, pigment to water ratio. So you're going to have a very, very dark um, you know, just about as thick as you can make it. So this would be a very creamy, I want to make sure I'm on screen here, uh, a very creamy consistency. And, you know, that's about as dark as you can go. I'm using Payne's Gray for this. Um, and I'm using Payne's Gray because it's got a full value range. So I can go, the, I can go as light as anything. You can pretty much take the darkest color in your palette and make it super, super light, depending on how much water you add. Now, if I dilute this a little bit, I will get the next value, which is an 8, and so on. So I'm just going to go down the value scale here, and I'll have to leave a little gap in between so it doesn't run in between. And I'm just going to keep adding another drop of water to this as I work my way down. And eventually, I'm going to get to the point where um, I'm painting with basically just um, nothing, <laughs> just water. So slowly going to get a little bit lighter as we work our way down. Uh, and actually just doing this exercise, this, this um, grayscale exercise, teaches you to do things in increments as well. So um, it will um, you know, help you to judge how much water you need to be adding to something in order to uh, get it as light or as dark as you want it. Uh, getting the right value when you're painting in watercolor can often be a challenge. Now, I'm probably going too light too quick here, but we'll see. I'm adding just a drop of water each time, so it's slowly getting lighter and lighter. Now, there's not too much difference there. I probably need to add a little bit more water. Uh, so even just doing this grayscale is a good exercise. A little more water. All right, so I think I've probably gone a little bit too quick here, but we'll see. I think I went light too too soon, but that's not too bad. All right, so now here's the thing. With thumbnails, we're not using all of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down now into, because this is going to help you simplify your watercolors. I'm going to group this like this. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so what, why? Why would I do this? Mainly it's to help you simplify and uh, to sort out um, the, uh, 
sort out the um, amount of water and so on that you need to be using and to break up your your composition into these just these three basic values okay so we have this something like this um, one question that just came up is uh, the difference between value and saturation uh, saturation um, is usually in terms of is usually used in terms of um, uh, color intensity intensity meaning how how pure and vibrant and and um, clean the color is so if it's highly saturated it's it's very rich it's it might be up here in your nine but it's also very saturated so it has a lot of pigment in it um, uh, struggling to get it with different other mediums um, difference between value and saturation okay so value and sat saturation can be um, can be sort of um, used uh, not not quite interchangeably but um, they're very very similar uh, sometimes when people are talking about saturation they like I said they're talking about the color intensity um, you know saturated color means like that it's very pure color now if I took a a brown for example and I put that on my paper I wouldn't call that highly saturated unless it was um, just a whole lot of pigment um, but Anyway, I, it's it's something that uh, you know people will use different terminologies for things, but um, saturation and um, the you know your your rich color here, they that that would apply to this. You wouldn't call one, two, or three, or anything in this lower portion of your grayscale. You wouldn't call that color like you wouldn't call that color saturated because it's got so much water in it. Um, so I guess that. I hope that explains that but getting back to this um, we, don't, we don't even have to do anything here I can basically just take this grouping and call it white let's call it white then we'll take this grouping here and we'll make it really dark so let's just go really dark here So I'm using really rich color. Um, I've got a lot of pigment to water ratio, so it's going to be very dark. Now the only thing I have to sort now is to get something in this mid-value range. So I'm just going to take some of this, dilute it to somewhere in the middle. Right? So I'll go midway here. All right, so here's the exercise. See if you can do a painting with only three values. Um, sometimes you have to have four, but most of the time you can break down a painting into three simple values. And if you can do that, you can definitely um, plan your watercolor with greater confidence and ease as you're painting. Uh, the one th miss misconception that I had about um, thumbnails when I began was that I started immediately putting little leaves on trees and I you know put you know the siding on the house and the windows and the you know all this kind of stuff all these details into my paint my little thumbnail but the idea behind the whole thumbnail is to break it down into the major values and the major shapes um, just to see whether or not uh, everything looks correct together. Let me bring back a couple of these examples just to show you what I mean. All right, so here's here's a simple um, landscape here. This one actually does have more than, uh, this one actually has uh, probably, this might have four values, okay? So I've got my white, which is my roof. I've got my grass and my sky. Both of those 
are the same value. So those actually would be my, my mid value here. <clears throat> and then I have the dark side of the barn and so on. And that is the darks here in the, in the, um, uh, in the trees in the background, on the side of the building and in the grasses here. So I've broken it down into three basic shapes. Now, the only difference here is that, you know, I kind of put some water in here and let some of that run as well. So you can have some soft edges and, and in, in that case, you get some of the darks that bleed into the lighter colors and that will give you actually a greater range of value. But, but the actual painting process uh, meant just painting three values. So let me give you an example. I will take this, um, let me let me start with um, one of these. Uh, I guess it's, these are daffodils. I guess right here. Okay, so I've got these little daffodils. Okay, I've not, I have not painted this before, so um, this is going to be a little bit new. I'm going to look for my basic shape. So with my pencil drawing, I'm just going to be putting down basic shapes and so on. Um, good morning. I was I was just reading through the comments to see if we had any questions so far. So good. So we don't. We're. I must be doing okay. All right. So I'm going to take, for example, um, uh, I'm going to take maybe this one out. I like a grouping of three a little bit better than a grouping of four, but taking the photo I didn't really have a lot of choice but let's first start with my thumbnail size okay just about the size of a business card nothing nothing too um, substantial and remember I'm going to do this in three values so let's give this a go I'm going to zoom in a little closer so you can see what I'm doing all right so for my drawing I'm going to just do the trumpets first and I'm just doing a, a basic circle uh, and then I'll put a few of the petals on here and you can see how carefully I'm drawing this not very carefully at all just being sarcastic there but um, And then there's maybe like a little, there's leaves and things like that. So that's my drawing. It's it's not very fancy, as you can see. It's It doesn't even really look like anything. Anybody looking that probably wouldn't even know what I was drawing. But I'm just looking at basic shapes. So one, one, exer one part of this exercise is learning to squint your eyes. Just look through your eyelashes. And when you do that, you automatically eliminate... Um, the uh, the details right so you just break it down you see what's light what's medium what's dark and that's what you're hunting for okay so i'm actually hunting for those values so if i squint my eyes and i'm good i've already got my white done it's already first step is already done so now all i have to do is i have to paint everything that isn't white okay this is the important part a lot of people come in and start painting the flower and, and so you're, you're thinking to yourself, I'm painting a flower, I'm painting a flower. And what I want you to do is I'm painting a value, I'm painting a value. So I'm going to come in here and I will paint everything except for values one, two, three. So anything in this grouping here, I'm going to just leave white paper. And I'm going to go to my next value, and it's going to play out something like this. Everything except for the whites, all right? So everything, not like, it's not flower versus background. It's value, just different values, right? So I'm painting all of this in here. And it's all going to be this mid value. And when I paint this, it's not going to look like anything. It's not going, nobody's going to understand what this is at this stage. 
They'll look at it and they will be completely confused about what it is I'm painting. And often when I have a, a class and I'll be saying to people to, um, you know, to add more value to like, you know, add another value or make something darker and so on. Uh, what I end up getting from them is, um, you know, a lot of details and things like that. Or what they'll say to me is, oh, this, mine doesn't look right. This doesn't look good at such an early stage in their painting. And they haven't really given it the opportunity to, um, to get to the end result. Because I'm going to take what, I've, what I'm doing right now, and this is ultimately going to be... Um, converted into the three values and it will eventually evolve into a um, finished thumbnail. So I'm going to come in here. There's some a little bit more light hitting this one. So I'm just working around some of those lights and so I'm squinting my eyes to look to see where these lights are. There we go. All right, so isn't that lovely? <laughs> it doesn't really look like anything, right? So the key here is, is to change your thought process, right? So we're going to stop thinking about flowers. We're going to start thinking about where that mid value is, where, where's everything, everything in the painting that is this, this middle grouping. How can I just group all that together? Not separate the flowers from the background, not separate the petals from um, the trumpet and things like that, or the stamen from the trumpet. And not separating everything. You know, that's the way we automatically draw and the way we automatically think. And uh, so this is going to break that down. Now, since I have to wait for that to dry, I'm going to go on to thumbnail number two. So I'm going to do another um, another little uh, credit card sized um, or business card sized uh, box here. And this one's a vertical, so I'll do it this way. And I'm going to squint my eyes. So I'm looking at my, I'm looking on the screen here. So I'm squinting my eyes to see where those lights are and where all the mid values are and everything else. Okay, so I'm going to break this down the same way. I'm going to use the mid value here. And I've got a lot of glare on this photo. Um, maybe I can hold it up and you can see. Uh, I need to hold this too, so we'll just do it this way. Um, I'm going to come in with uh, all of this, this tree big tree. There's uh, lots of shadows across the snow, so I'm going to do this, and this, and this, and this. Lots of that, even footprints. Everything's connected. It's, it's not separated uh, the way we want to normally do, right? So the cabin's connected to the tree, the tree is connected to the shadows, etc., etc., and so I'm no longer looking at trees and cabin. I'm looking at shapes and values, and that's what this one's. This what this exercise is all about. It's all connected and this is all trees and stuff back here. All right, so we'll put some trees back there. Now that doesn't look like anything, does it? Anybody looking at that would just think it was a bunch of scribbles. So now how can we break this down? That was that one was a really fast one. Let's Put a little bit more in here. Landscapes do tend to be a lot faster than, uh, say, portraits or anything like that. But uh, there we go. So we have 
those long shadows, we've got the trees, and we've got the cabin. It's all, all the same thing. Uh, these little marks in here, that you see, these darker marks, that is the, um, that is the embossed um, Arches logo. <laughs> so that's what you're seeing there. Uh, it doesn't actually have that way. So now I'm going to go to my dark values. So this is, this is grouping it now down into this grouping here. It's the only thing I have left, right? I, I only have one more thing to do. So really these exercises can be so quick. Um, it takes a lot of thinking though. Like I'm, I'm talking about how simple it is, but it does take some thought process. A different sort of stream of thinking than you're used to. So that um, that's the part that's going to be harder for you. So, but it's a scrap of paper. You can practice it and you can really get your head around it. And then, I, I, you're right, David, I'm, I'm actually painting two values at once because the white's already on the paper. And um, I am not avoiding the darks. The dark's going to cover up any of the light, as we're going to find out. All right, so now I'm going to come in here to my first one with the flowers, and I'm going to start breaking this up. All right, so we have leaves back here. And now a lot of this, you might consider some of this uh, detail. Yeah, I suppose in some ways it's I'm doing detail, but I'm also going to be working around uh, what I've done so that I have to be detailed in that sort of uh, thinking I guess but the um, the actual flower and I could even hint at a little bit here so I'm going to come in with some of these darks and I'm, I've already got some mid values in there so they don't all have to be like all of the background doesn't necessarily have to be dark I can actually just come in and um, paint some of this now I, I eliminated this flower so I'm just going to paint uh, leaves and stems in here Let's get that ruffly effect here. And let's get some of the, the darks back here. And before I'm done, like so when you looked at this half here nobody would be able to tell you what that was. Now when I finish this half, you'll know exactly what it is. So this is the whole thinking process that we're breaking it down into. And when you actually think of it in terms of just simple values, you can put in more effective washes. Uh, you can do it. You do your watercolor in fewer steps. And you know that if you are doing your watercolor in fewer steps, it's going to have a fresher, um, more spontaneous looking result. If you are going back in layer after layer after layer, unless you're experienced, right? Um, if you go back in too many layers and you start, you know, trying to adjust and fix the value or fix the color and so on, things can start to get a little bit muddy. So um, that's why this is so helpful. All right, so I'm going to come in and I want to go around some of the uh, petals down here. This is really a dark area, this whole thing down here. So. <clears throat> now I'm going to put now just because we are working with three values does not mean that we can't soften some edges so here I'm going to rinse my brush and blot it and I'm going to soften this edge a little bit I'm going to soften this edge a little bit It's still not like highly detailed. It's not like super accurate or anything like that. 
But what I'm getting out of this is I am really simplifying my process. I'm thinking it through. I'm, I'm working out all the bugs. You know, sometimes you find in the process of making your thumbnail, oh, I should have done something different. Well, wouldn't it be a lot better to take five minutes to do this and have it all sorted out than to get to the end of your, or get to that point in your um, painting only to find out that that wasn't a good option. So this is a great way to get a dry run, sort of like doing your scales in music, uh, warming up as a uh, athlete or anything like that. You know, this is a terrific exercise for that. And I used to hate it. I used to, I, th I thought, I'm just going to, you know, why am I wasting all my, all my time when I could be painting my painting? You know, this, this seems like a waste of time. And I couldn't, I didn't understand at the time, obviously. So um, there's some flowers back here. So I'm just going to allude to those. You know, but I didn't understand this whole process and, or why it was even valuable. All right, so let's do some some more uh, leaves here and just hint at some greenery back here. That's pretty good. All right, now I've got the middle of this one to do. So right in here, we've got a little bit of that extra shadow on the inside to make it look like it's it's got some depth to it. I'm going to rinse my brush and I will I'm going to soften some of this just to get that edge a little bit softer. Actually, I'm going to maybe put a little more in there than I have. And Here's another edge I'm going to soften, just soften here. And we have um, our daffodils, three values. Very easy steps. The first one's already done for you, so that's pretty darn simple. Um, so I know that if I go to do my wash in my painting, whether I'm doing it in color, or if I'm doing it in black and white, I can pretty much uh, not worry too much about uh, letting my peas and carrots touch, you know, where I have my flower touching my leaves sort of thing. I can just basically put it all in, put all those colors in, knowing that I can come back in with darker color on top and um, and cover that up. So I get, I've got this little, this little one is broken down now into this nice little nice little value here. This is a value study. And uh, now let's let's move on to our um, scenery. And like I said, you can use this for anything. You can use it for a portrait. You can use it for animals or birds or landscape or still life, whatever you, whatever you like. All right, so um, now I'm looking at this photo and I'm thinking to myself, hmm, that cabin's awfully dark. And it's probably just the way the print, the picture printed out. But that cabin's awful dark. Do I really want it that dark? I think I'm going to make it a little lighter. Um, I mean, I can tell just by squinting that that cabin almost gets lost in those trees. So this is the other advantage to using a thumbnail is that it's going to help you problem solve. It'll help you um, fix what may not look good in your photograph. I could almost, I mean almost, work just from this to, to do a painting. And it would be a looser painting than I typically would do. But it would be um, well structured, it would have um, good balance, it would have, um, you know, full value range, and so on. So I could do very nicely with just working from my, ref, my little thumbnail. Uh, a lot of your painting can be worked from a thumbnail and you'll find that that can be a really valuable thing. All right, so I'm going to come in here on my uh, tree trunk and I'm going to come right down here to the and let's use let's use the side of my brush here to get a broken edge here on my tree trunk. Does not look good.
Now, uh, I've got a lot of dark trees in the background too, so I, again, I'm going to use the side of my brush just to use, uh, just to get a little bit more of that, that effect. Side of my brush gives me great texture, so you, you know, you can certainly simplify the process by doing this. I'm going to be putting some trees in here and a little more greenery back here. Let's put some of these uh, evergreen boughs here. And there's a, there's a lot of sort of twiggy type things here. I can just sort of put those in. Now the cabin. So the cabin, let's see how I can break this down. When you have two sides to a building, for example, if you make them the, both the same value, it will look like a flat building. It won't look like a building with a corner. So I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a value on one side of the building. So here we go. Uh, value here. This side of the building is going to get some dark on it. My window is going to get some dark on it. So I'm going to have this little window here. That's a window, that little blob. Um, and I'm going to go under the um, roof, <laughs> under the under the roof here. So that has some shadow. And actually, there's a little bit peeking out this side too. All right. So I think that if I were to lighten up this cabin, I could definitely improve uh, this composition. Now, could I add another value in here and actually make it? four values sure you know I could go ahead and do it at that point so I might take that mid value again and just let's let's darken this cabin a little bit but not as dark as what we originally had even that might be a little bit on the dark side so let's blot some of that off so there we go so I think that that has good balance um, I could even darken this this one strong shadow here um, you know, you could come in with a few more values, but don't get caught in the um, detail trap. <laughs> the detail trap, you know what it is. You've all been there. Uh, you know, when things start looking like they've just been worked to death, um, remember you're only working a, <clears throat> a size that's about the size of a business card. So don't get, like you don't have to take it further than this. Just squint your eyes, look at it and go, hmm, I think that looks pretty good. Or you might say, well, I think these trees need to be stronger. So I'm going to make them a little bit darker. I'm going to maybe bring them down a little bit. You know, this is when you do your problem solving and you work it out. Do another thumbnail. You know, maybe try this same scene, but make it a horizontal um, or combine two photos and, and try it out. It's a great way to try things out. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, so um, that's basically what it boils down to in terms of a value study. Now, when it comes to incorporating one of these, one or more of these into color, well, that gets a little bit tougher because you have to now convert those values. So we're looking at this type of thing and we need to convert these into colors. And often what can happen is that the you know depending on the time of day and so on but these might be warmer colors they might be uh, golds or yellows or reds or oranges and then these might be blues or purples or greens down in here and uh, then it's not too difficult to um, uh, work out now i didn't pick the most colorful pictures did i <laughs> I, I neither of these really has a lot of color to them uh, but you can see what I did here. It's another value study. So basically, I just substituted a blue in a similar value to to this for my snow, rather than doing it in gray. So that's more or less what I did. Um, I pushed back my shadow. I made it a little bit more purple instead of um, doing it just plain gray. 
this one actually has um here we've got uh, we've got chicago skyline here with the bean and uh you know it's a lot of steel so i converted this into um a lot of different blues in here at blues and grace so I, I converted it that way this one again isn't isn't the most colorful but when we can start moving more into color um, so I had my values worked out so I had the green value the blue value um, the the red value all very similar all very similar um, even this shadow if I were to take my colors and um, make a photocopy, a black and white photocopy of them, right? My colors would be very similar in value. Um, if I were to just take this blue, this red, this green, uh, and this gray, right? Lots of different colors there, but if I did it in black and white, those would all be very, very similar. They'd be, they'd be very much in that mid-value range. Uh, so converting it to color simply means that, you know, you just need to hit the same kind of value. Uh, you can definitely um, work these um, together. You know, sometimes your colors can blend together. In this case, I did them uh, separately, so there's no blending here, but they absolutely could. If I had some of this red bleeding down into my green, or if I had some of my green bleeding up into my uh, my red lighthouse here, it wouldn't be a big, it, it's a thumbnail. Like I could work it out. Um, but that would again teach you, you know, where you want to have um, work dry um, next to, uh, like I have a dry edge or have a wet edge, you know, where I have two colors blending together. This would be very um, important, for example, uh, like this is a, a structural building, but if I were doing a portrait, I may not want to have all those harder edges. But if I did, it wouldn't be that big a deal either. Um, yeah, so so then I, I started this one off and I put in, you know, the shadows and so on. The darks, I came in and I did the darker green on, on the grass. I did a uh, darker gray for the windows. Uh, I did a darker red for the shadows on the on this roof here and the chimneys and so on. You know, so so I worked it out that way. Uh, yeah, here's another one. This one, this one, I probably fussed a little bit more with, and you can tell it looks like a little bit more finished. This was in uh, Newfoundland, in the church, and. Uh, it, it too, you know, I have, sometimes I soften my edges like my clouds here. Sometimes my edges were just straight. So depending on the kind of day it is, if it's a sunny day, you might have, uh, you know, harder edges. If it's an overcast day, like we had some blue sky here, but uh, if it's an overcast day, you might not see these shadows of the railing like this. They might be gone. Uh, you wouldn't see the shadow against the building and things like that. So that all gets grouped together in those same sort of values. And um, yeah, so this exercise is like hands down one of the best exercises for learning to uh, cut to the chase and get the simplicity in your watercolor to make everything look fresh, everything look spontaneous, like you know what you're doing, right? <laughs> Anyway, so um, I think I'm going to wrap this one up. This one's not that long today because value studies are really very quick, um, but it helps you to determine whether or not you're even working from a good photograph or if your photograph needs editing, um, and it'll help you break down the painting process as well. Um, it's definitely easier if you are looking for photographs that have a, a greater value range. In other words, light lights, dark darks and a range in between um, but this this whole grouping together of these values is what it boils down to right keep it simple silly <laughs> and um, so the white's already done makes it easy all right i'm going to wrap this one up and thank you so much for joining me again just a little heads up uh, next week um, 
I'm not sure what my Wi-Fi situation is going to be. I'm actually going to be at a cottage. So um, if I can get my Wi-Fi going, I may try and do a little bit of um, uh, live video um, plein air kind of thing. So uh, we'll see how my how my um, uh, reception is and whether or not I can get online properly uh, with enough power and uh, we'll see what we can do. So um, if you liked this, give it a like and uh, we will hopefully see you next week. Thanks for joining. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.